Sometimes helping one another is the way we can get there. You learn from your mistakes, I love it. Social and personal competencies really allow students to flourish in ways that just academic competence can't. You're saying positive feedback to yourself. Social and personal competencies are about how we work together, how do we interact with others, and all of our careers are going to be a human endeavor. All the things we do in our community are a human endeavor. She found a smart way to say that um, she's ready for summer. Social and emotional learning to me are the basis of a child's education. That if a child feels socially acceptable, um, emotionally happy and safe, then the academic piece will come. Okay, we're going to start off our morning meeting today by sharing how we're feeling. As our teachers are incorporating social and emotional strategies in their classroom, we are seeing students' achievement increase. We are also seeing attendance increase and we're also seeing less discipline in the classroom. Ask questions, you know, share. You're gonna have one person speaking for the group, but share. It's a collaboration. Often when we hear from employers, we ask them what are the things that you're interested in, um, because the chamber part of our goal is to line up uh, public policy with the needs that employers have in order to be successful in, in, in Tennessee. Typically, you expect the answer to be, we need certifications, or we need someone with a two-year degree or a four-year degree, but it's really not that. Um, a lot of employers tell us, I just need somebody that has good employability skills or good soft skills, things that are very simple um, that oftentimes folks take for granted. At some point in time, you had to have thought in the back of your head, I might have gotten judged by this. When we think about the pathways to success, if we don't start with social and emotional learning, the other things are just not going to occur. If you don't have uh, a set process for that, then you become reactive. So when it happens, you're scrambling for what are the best solutions, what are the best strategies. It gives us that proactive opportunity to understand what they're dealing with each and every day, to address those issues in a proactive way, so that way when it does happen, we can bring back up the strategies that we uh, shared and talk to them about the application process. So go ahead and just turn to your partner and share with them so that everyone gets to share today. Our schools need to be able to create a safe place for our students to come and take risks. They need to model what these skills will look like so that our students are seeing how to collaborate, how to critically think. Angelique, go ahead and start us off. So social and personal competencies can begin to be developed as early as when school starts. And so when a student is in kindergarten or first grade, they're learning problem solving, they're learning flexible thinking, they're learning how to work with others in cooperative groups. And then they use those same skills as they get into high school and they begin to go out into an internship or a work-based learning experience. That's what I'm going to touch on is really why we're caring about these kinds of things. Like why does the importance of social and personal competencies really can't be overstated. It's a set of skills that we're learning right alongside our academic knowledge and skills throughout our entire experience in school. But it's also competencies that you continue to develop as an adult as you grow over your workplace learning. One of the things that we found is that for social and personal competencies to be truly integrated into classrooms and a school, the teachers not only need to understand how to do the work and how to integrate it, but it also helps when administrators understand and support the work and promote it constantly, make sure that it is a focus, um, but also make sure that opportunities are provided for teachers to take risks themselves in the classroom and then to go to professional learning to understand and, and to learn how to integrate it into the classrooms. You have to have a heart and a passion for it. You cannot successfully bring in social and emotional strategies in your building if you don't have a heart for it. But what I've learned is that if students feel safe, and if students are fed, and if students feel loved, they're going to succeed and they're going to perform for you. So once you identify a problem or a need or something like that, then you design a solution. That's what the work that the department has done on the social and personal competency modules and the, the toolkit that we're using with our, our schools and districts have really been developed through listening to the field. What are the needs that we understand our students need as they continue to develop in their own employability and career skill set? 
The modules will be helpful for teachers so that they can understand how SEL does connect to the content. They have real world examples given for them so that they're not struggling. A lot of our teachers want to do the work, they just don't know how to connect it. One of the things that we're constantly asked is, I need to see what that looks like. What does choice look like in a classroom? And so uh, the videos will be extremely useful for our teachers um, just to see how they can incorporate choice and voice in the classroom and the other skills. We're very proud of the work that we've done and how we've been able to do it with teachers alongside us and with folks that are in industry alongside us to say, when we connect those dots through K-12, we're gonna have kids that are learning these competencies every single year as they continue to grow and improve.